Morning, beautiful being. It is lovely to see you. Inside here, out of the blustery wind and the slightly mm, trying to be drizzly day, it's autumn, it's fall, however you want to call it. So we're inside and we've got rocks. Of course we've got rocks. We've got this one today. This is amethyst matrix really you know it's not the normal sort of purple color that everybody loves this is the stuff that amethyst grows in it's still all quartz um but this is lovely and gnarly hi andrea it's beautiful to see you i mean look at this isn't it fabulous it's so not perfect and i love that it's not perfect and so i sort of called the old man because you know it looks a bit like Somebody with a, it's not a grumpy face, it's just a mouth that's open. Um, and it's a little bit, it's, it's a teeny tiny little bit shiny in there, but not really, not much. It's just a beautiful thing. You can see the layers of agatized stuff that's in there. Good morning, Vicky. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, Lisa. It's lovely to see you all. My son, my Monday, your Sunday. So we're just enjoying old man rock. <laughs> um, and this one, this is, a, well, it was a piece of peacock ore. It is a piece of peacock ore, but all the purpleness of it is gone. Um, and it's just a bit golden. And still, it wanted to come on and say hello today. So it's a, it's a very soft gold color on it now. Hi, Magda. I don't know. Um, I probably didn't know once what it is that makes peacock or, or peacock coloured. You know, it's all blue and purple and everything. But leave it in the air for long enough and it changes colour. So it's something that's not terribly stable. And you just get this softly bronzed rock, which I really rather like. So there you go. You can see the sort of shininess of it like that. Last but not least, a piece of New Zealand. This is an unpolished raw New Zealand agate. Um, and you can imagine that there's been a cavity inside rock um, and the hot silica solution, which is what quartz is made up of, has flowed into it. And you can see that the, you know, that's the outside and then the crystals have grown inwards. And so it's mostly, it's solid, right? But I love this. And it, it just wanted to come and say hi today. So here's the outside, you know, it's unpolished. It's not perfect. It's fabulous. All of our rocks today are so not perfect. But I love this. Um, and actually, this bit that looks dark, I don't know if you can tell, but it's actually a bit shiny. It's actually got shiny, sparkly quartz crystals in there. So it's fabulous. And it's a soft, golden, vaguely, um, you know, the, the yellow quartz that you get. It's not carnelian, but it's, just, it's, it's not white. It's just this beautiful, soft gold. So, that's our rocks today. And today, what we're talking about is this whole thing of when bad shit happens and is there a lesson I need to learn? Am I being punished? Uh, you know, how is it that I manifested my life the way it is, you know? Um and, and, and the seed for this conversation came from last week when the lovely Linda, who I know you'll see this, Linda, Linda said, well, you know, I, I mean, I understand because remember we talked about um, being the person who's on the other side of the miracle and the, the research that Dr. Joe Dispenza did many years ago now. And he got really, I've got to understand this spontaneous remission stuff, how the miracles happen. And there are four things that all of the people that he talked to who had manifested a miracle for themselves had in common. Um, and Linda's very astute comment, which echoes something that many of us have thought or wondered at one time or another is, okay, I get the process, I understand, you know, that um, that I, I, I'm somehow responsible or interconnected with or affecting how my life is, by how I think and how I feel and what I do. Okay, yeah, right, let's say I own that. Um, and I own that there is something bigger out there, which is, you know, that there's something that I can interact with or call upon or work with to help me create something different. And I own that I need to reinvent myself. I've got to become some different person 
who's not creating the same way that I was before because I became something that I didn't, don't want to be anymore, so I've got to be someone else. And then you have, you know, the, the thing that keeps happening is that people have this experience of they lose track of space and time, and when they come back, something's different. And so, okay, that's great and dandy and wonderful, and I understand that, and I'm beginning to work that. But what about, you know, how was it that the really shitty thing that happened to me 20, 30 years ago, or, you know, last week, or whenever it was, which I did not consciously create, how come that found me? You know, I didn't create the car accident, I didn't create the, the sexual assault, I didn't ask for my parents to be the way they were, I didn't ask to be born where I was, where it's so difficult, you know, ah! And yeah, this is a very big question. And actually, you know, saying I didn't ask to be born where I was or it's so different, difficult, um, you know, that's, that's, a, that's a different thing about what we choose when we come in um, or before we come in. And that's another story. What I want to talk about um, is really these, you know, like the sledgehammer that seems to come out of nowhere, the accident, the, the piano that falls out of the sky on your head, you know. It's like, how the feck did that find me? I didn't ask for it. I didn't want it. You know, what's that about? So that's the question that I want to explore. And we might get to the whole thing of these things that we don't get a choice about, like where we're born and who our parents are, you know. But I don't want to get distracted by that. So maybe we'll get there, maybe we won't. So this, and that was a question that I don't even think I really started to ask it's like I didn't really articulate that to myself for for much of my life. It was like I was too unaware. I was too unconscious. I didn't even understand about the fact that how I think and how I feel and how I act is what creates my life. Really? So before I understood about conscious creation and how that actually works, I was unconscious. I wasn't consciously creating. And this is what I learned from Dr. Joe Dispenza, which made so much sense to me when I heard him say it. Um, and it's something that he just says in passing in, in, in one of the workshops, you know, I bought an online workshop. And it just, you know, oh, that's the reason why. Because he says, you know, that the person says to him, well, I didn't create this disaster that found me. And he said, no, you created it by default. If you're not consciously creating, sooner or later, you're just going through your life, something is going to bump into you. You're open to the randomness of chance. Something is going to bump into you. Those are his words. Like, yeah, okay, fine, whatever. But that made sense to me and I, because I understood by then, and I understood for quite some time before then, that like attracts like, you know, we understand about the law of attraction. Hi, Mary! We understand, you know, whatever I really am inside myself is what's going to find me, right? And actually, you know, really, whatever I really am inside me, whether I know it, no matter how unconscious I am of who I'm being, that is what must show up in my life because the universe has no choice. It must endorse who I'm being. Oh, so you mean I'm wandering along, unconscious, open to the randomness of chance, but I'm still broadcasting a signal to the universe that says, I am being this. I have mastered the art of being myself. Bring me more of this and bring it to me in a way that surprises me so I know it's from you. Except, of course, we're not conscious at, those, at that time that there is a divine observer out there that is co-creating us, that is loving us into life, whatever shape we choose ourselves to be. So when the thing, whatever it is, arrives, it comes as a complete surprise. But we don't make the connection that whatever it is, it is, it is literally the outpouring, the out extrusion, the, the manifestation of who we've been being. Why did this happen to me? Why am I 21 and married to a man that I later realized really, you know, is a sweet guy, but really didn't want me. He just wanted to be married, but that was different. And I'm living in 
this place in, in Wellington and I can't sleep. My God, I can't sleep. I had such awful insomnia. Why am I so sick? Why am I just... And I didn't even understand how sick I was, you know. Oh, my God. It was it was horrible. I was sort of sleeping about four hours a night. And, and, and I understand now physically what was going on. I had some mercury fillings put in. My methylation, which is the chief, one of the chief detoxification pathways in the body, was not working. I had, had really have had dysfunctional methylation for most of my life until about a year ago when I did one of Dr. Joe's meditations and it suddenly switched on. That was really interesting. I just knew and it did and it changed whole dance with toxicity but back then there was stress because of who I was being and I was being very unhappy and very stressed in those days um, and there was toxicity which if I wasn't being unhappy and stressed and down regulating the genes for health and up regulating other genetic expressions which led to disease then my methylation would have been working but it wasn't because of who I was being. So not only did I have this toxic stress coming from the amalgam fillings in my mouth, and there are people who have head full of amalgam fillings and they don't get sick. And this is why. That genetic pathway doesn't fall over. That is, it's, 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 it's genetic. It's not fixed in your genes. It's about genetic expression. And, and you either detoxify well or you don't. And I didn't. Because I had already programmed, conditioned myself through my unconscious choices as a young child because of the trauma I had when I went to school and then the world wasn't safe and, and I was just this very angry, upset little person and I didn't understand all that, but it programmed me into a genetic destiny. So, you know, going along through life and having lots of actually really stressful experiences because of who I was being and didn't understand, didn't even realize they were bad or stressful. It was just normal. It was who I thought I was. And, you know, then I marry this man who isn't actually right for me at all. He was kind and considerate and simply really not there um, emotionally and um, very unhappy. And all of this stress starts to build and I get sick. But I didn't understand that. I had the worst adrenal fatigue. Um, you know, and I just carried on pushing through because that's what you do. And, and I mean, I didn't understand, but I remember being up, you know, in the, in the middle of the night getting out of the bedroom and going into the, you know, the lounge area and just sort of screaming silently into the universe, why? You know, sort of silent scream that reverberates from here to the whole of time. Um, and, and having no, I mean, nobody, no, I was disconnected. I couldn't get the answers. You know, it made no sense to me. I did not understand that already by the age of 21, I had programmed my body into a destiny and that was who I was being and the universe had no choice but to endorse it. Not at all. Um, you know, and for some people it's not a sickness that, you know, carries on and I mean, I had adrenal fatigue, I had that poisoning thing later on, my thyroid fell over. Um, long journey before I finally start to wake up and it wasn't this great, you know, blinding spiritual awakening. I didn't have one of those. It's a long, slow, incremental process. And I understand why for me everything is slow and incremental because that's the way that a lot of us actually journey through life. Um, and it's okay, you know, if you don't have this great blinding light, suddenly everything changes. Because you get set up to feel like if you don't have that, there's something wrong with you. No. There's many ways to wake up to yourself. <laughs> so it wasn't about a lesson. It wasn't punishment, although I know I felt that way, either consciously or unconsciously. It was like, what did I do wrong? What have I not figured out? What the hell's going on here? It wasn't any of that. I just programmed myself into that destiny. It had to come to me one way or another. Um, 
And, you know, the, the people who, you know, they had a serious accident and they ended up in pain for 11 years and then they started to overcome themselves and they changed and then, you know, they had a massive experience, this guy that I'm thinking of. It was an awful, awful pain for 11 years and, you know, he made it to one of Joe's um, events and had a coherence healing and the whole thing just changed. It was amazing. Um, but he understood that what he created, what he ran into was an expression of who he was being at that time. It doesn't come from nowhere, although it seems to. It is always, I've created that. There is nobody else who creates my life. Um, and that's why, you know, this, this is kind of a, a bit of pill to swallow. When something really awful that's lasted for decades, you know, the thing happens and then it just goes and goes and it gets worse and worse and worse. Because um, this happens to people, right? And you think, what the hell did I do wrong? Why is God punishing me? You know, this must be because I'm a sinner. No, it's just the universe has to endorse who you're being. And the thing is, when you have something painful happen, right? And just, just speaking purely in three dimensions, you know, if you if you hurt a muscle, right, the body is programmed to protect that muscle. So, you know, you, you sprain your, your ankle and then the other, you limp. So the other leg has to work harder while that one's trying to recover and various muscles tighten up. The whole body accommodates that hurt. Um, and then if the hurt doesn't heal up the right way, or even if it does, the body tends to remember the accommodation. And then even though the leg's okay again, the ankle's fine, you still limp because you've memorized that way of being. And then because you limp, you end up with a slightly twisted spine or your shoulders end up uneven. You know, do you see what I'm saying? That we accommodate and then we forget to go back or move forward to the person who's beyond the injury. It becomes part of who we are. And this identity of who we are and how we're avoiding the pain and you know how we've accommodated all the stuff that's happened to us gets more and more distorted. And that's why you know you have a chronic illness and then you get another one and then you get another one. Never mind you know any medical interventions which might have side effects and all that stuff. It's fundamentally because it the incoherence, the imbalance, the dis ease tends to build it's what happens and we get more and more programmed into the destiny of who we think we are and so to reverse that you know those four things that I talked about last week which I know about because Joe did the research we have to realize that we can just keep unconsciously creating what we don't want and, of course, the body gets conditioned to it, and we've talked very many times about how challenging it is to go against that conditioning. My, my conditioning for victimhood, for desperation, for impossibility, for I can't do this, I can't change this, I don't know how, I can't see how, it's impossible. Uh, that, you know, I'm at the end of everything, and it's, I, it's just impossible, and I can't do anything about this. I've been so deeply conditioned at a physical and neurological level to that state of being. And, and you know, I realize how long <laughs> it's taken me to really start to uncondition myself, you know, because I've been doing this work where I've been actually having tools that I know work, and I can say they work, to recondition my mind, to recondition my body, to have a super highway in my brain towards love and expansion and connection and feeling whole rather than a super highway in my brain that's about all that other stuff that I used to just be and think I was and this is how life is and I didn't know any different. And that's the, that, you know, the bitter pill is, okay, somehow I created all this, but the, there is a way to get out of it. It's just not anything that you can look at outside yourself and say, oh, well, if I do this, if I do that program, if I buy that thing, if I, you know, stand on my head, as I've been known to say more than once, I stand on my head, wave my arm the right way and fart pink, then I'll, you know, it, it'll be better. No, I've got to become somebody else so the universe can endorse that. So the universe can give me more of that. Um... And for me, the astonishing thing has been to recognize just how deeply I was that old me. 
Um, and you know, you, you've heard me speak in the last couple of weeks about immense tugs of war inside my own mind and body. Who am I going to be today? Oh my God, I have to choose every second. It gets exhausting. But I do know that when that's happening, that I am breaking the habit of being that old self that I've been for 40 years. And it's worth the effort to become somebody else who doesn't feel that way, who just can't go into the same level of fear and desperation that I used to. And, you know, this morning, the reason I'm, why I was about 10 minutes late on, we were early, right? You would, if you saw the picture, you would have seen that the picture was taken about 10 or 15 minutes earlier than usual. We got up early, we meditated, we went to the top of the hill. On the way down the hill, my husband twisted his ankle really badly. Um, so it's like, oh, okay, I've got a bit of time. So I did some energy work with him. We did some body talk. We, you know, we did some things. He, he can really walk only slowly. And... Um, you know, it'll heal. But the point being that neither of us went into, oh, how awful. It's a thing. We're both really coherent. We both just spent time in the field creating ourselves. And we both know this is for us. And maybe it's resistance that's come up because, you know, he's evolving. When things go wrong, what if they're not going wrong? They're going right, you know? It's like... We're both very different people to who we used to be. And so we respond to it differently. It's a creation. The only thing we're sure of is that it's a co-creation and that it's perfect and it's for us. But that's why I was late. Because we had to take care of ourselves and choose and, you know, all that. Hi, Judith. Lovely to see you. Um, it's not a punishment. It's not a lesson. It's just some aspect of him coming up for him to overcome and for me to notice the thoughts that try to flit into my head oh, but, oh he won't be able to do this now oh it's going to take it it's like no this is all for us who am I going to be that me or this me and no matter how diametric and dramatic it is that is always the choice that is the remedy that is the power we have to choose to create ourselves every day so if the shit's coming down, understand it's there for you to overcome it. There are many ways to do it. I just talk about my journey. Thank you so much for joining with me. I'm out of time. As always, it flies. I love being with you. Thank you so much for sharing your day with me. Morning, Misty. I just got time to say hello. Enjoy the replay, lovelies. All of you. And I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.